Guys, I'm very excited to be here tonight. There's some lovely art opening yeah. happening. I hope you all take a moment to reflect on this art, what it means to you. Um, but yeah, Brian Bruckman and Donna Higgins both um, contributed to this stuff. It's amazing. It's amazing. So, yeah! yeah! During the break, during the break, you should take a closer look. So uh, I'm very excited about tonight's show. Very excited is Bushwick Open Studios. I don't know if you guys saw, but Fort Useless got some press this week. Um, a blog called Brooklyn Spaces uh, wrote us up, and uh, it was cool to interview Jeremiah. He, he said some great stuff. They interviewed me, but uh, did not use my quotes. <laughs> <laughs> like they asked me what was the favorite show that I ever saw at Fort Useless was, and I was like, well, I don't remember the bands, but it was definitely the show where the two people had sex in the bathroom. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> We're all like, they've been in there for like 20 minutes. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> they asked me um, what I thought was the most important thing that, uh, that, that, that For Useless has accomplished. And I was like, well, it's definitely, we helped launch the hot new dance craze, the Bushwick Shimmy. Um, if you guys stick around, I'll be showing you how that goes later. Um, and then, uh, and then last but not least, <laughs> Shut up, dude. last but not least, um, they asked me what my favorite thing about Four Useless is, and I was like, duh, the hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't get to see the hot tub um, yet, but uh, it's, it's here, I promise you. But, um, but the weird thing was, uh, the thing I wanted to speak about the most, <laughs> Jeremiah wouldn't let me talk about it. Yeah, man, you know what I'm talking about, but I feel like I owe it to all of you Tell us. to come clean, yeah. And, uh, the truth is, guys, for Useless is haunted. Haunted. Super fucking haunted. Jeremiah did mention in the interview that before Fort Useless was here, there was another space, an uh, underground punk rock venue. Well, that much is true, but uh, what he failed to mention was the details of one notorious incident that happened in that club in this very room. It was a, it was a night like this, actually. Windy. 60% chance of rain. <laughs> there was a punk rock show happening here. Triple header. We had the sleazy hugs. <laughs> the rotten clams. <laughs> and of course, the celibate dicks. <laughs> Everyone was having a great time. Listening to the music, drinking, dancing, moshing, slamming, grunging. Crowd surfing, crowd walking, crowd moshing, crowd... You get the idea. But what they didn't know was that amongst them was a man. A psycho. Grade A Looney Tunes banana pants. His name was Johnny. Everyone knew Johnny. They knew him because of his six-inch green mohawk. But what Johnny was also known as was being the original bass player for the celibate dicks. That was up until a month ago, before the show, when he was unceremoniously kicked out of the band. The band said it was about creative differences, but the truth was Johnny was annoying. <laughs> See, Johnny had come to this show to size up his replacement, but also 
to exact his revenge. <laughs> See, Johnny brought a case of PBR. <laughs> was giving it out to everyone. When people said, Johnny, do you want some money for the PBR? He said, no, take it. Enjoy. <laughs> what these people didn't know was that the PBR was poisoned. It was about the third song into the celibate dick set when the new bass player, Ronnie, let out a sharp scream and crumpled to the floor. It wasn't long before the rest of the crowd followed suit. Left and right, band members, audience members, punk rockers, crusties. Oh, screaming, falling to the floor. Convulsing, writhing in agony. <laughs> By the time the paramedics and the police showed up, it was too late. Twenty-four dead. And Johnny, well, Johnny was long gone. Some say those twenty-four souls are still stuck here inside the walls of Fort Useless. <laughs> Stuck in some sort of sick hipster purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> Only to be released, possibly, if the celibate dicks were to play again. But we all know that will never happen. <laughs> and what about Johnny Ross? Well, Johnny was never seen or heard from again. <laughs> yeah. There have been the random sightings, unconfirmed. I have a friend who swears he saw him in a cheese shop on Bedford Avenue. <laughs> there was a tattoo artist who swears Johnny walked in on one rainy night and got a tattoo of a PBR can <laughs> on his right calf. Who <laughs> knows, <laughs> really? Johnny could still be walking the streets of Bushwick. Johnny could be here tonight! Look around, folks. Any strangers? <laughs> With green mohawks? <laughs> so I say to you. <laughs> A word to the wise. Be careful who you take a, a free PBR from. <laughs> Maybe your last. <laughs> Great. He's one of the beards of comedy. Give it up for Andy Sanford! 